an epic tale of kings, cattle barons, and a little bit of Broadway are one of the surprises found here on the beautiful Big Island of Hawaii, and more specifically, Parker Ranch. Rolling hills and pastures, as far as the eye can see, stands of trees, and of course, the ever-present cattle make up one of the largest private ranches in the U.S. So large, they say, at one time it encompassed half of the Big Island. Anthony, take us back to the very, very beginning. Well, with any cattle ranch, I think the beginning starts with the cattle. In the early 1790s, the British Navy under Captain Vancouver bring the cattle to Hawaii. They give a gift of about a half a dozen head to King Kamehameha. Um, Kamehameha accepts the gift. He doesn't really have a use for it, but he puts the kapu on it. Uh, a kapu no, is yeah. a... That is the edict by the king that the cattle shall be protected, you know, under penalty of death. Uh, the cattle are kept in Kona for a while, and then Kamehameha has them brought up to Waimea and released. The kapu is set for 10 years. Uh, so nobody touches the cattle for 10 years. In Waimea, we have beautiful weather. We have uh, no winter. We have plenty of grass, plenty of sunshine. So the cattle herd grows quite large. Parker jumps ship in 1809. Kamehameha unites all the islands under one monarch, himself, of course, in 1810. So it's a very special time for a young man to jump ship in Hawaii. Uh, he learns the Hawaiian language in Kauai High Harbor. After being here for about three months, he gets an audience with King Kamehameha. He goes to Kona. A um, couple outcomes possible. One, Kamehameha is going to like him and allow him to stay with protection by him, or he's not going to like him and he's probably going to be on the next ship out of here. But um, there's something that uh, Kamehameha sees in young Parker. He's a big man, he's a humble, He's hard working. Um, unlike a lot of sailors of the day, he doesn't drink. He's a teetotaler. So I think Kamehameha sees a fine young man and he puts him to work. Uh, he manages the royal fish ponds at Hanau Nau for King Kamehameha for several years. And in 1815, Kamehameha gives him the job that sets him apart, the first royal cattle hunter in Hawaii. 1816, he is allowed, with the blessing of King Kamehameha, to marry his granddaughter, Kipakani. So our young New England sailor joins the Ali'i class. Parker works as a royal cattle hunter up until 32. You know, from 32, the vaqueros come over, teach them how to be cowboys, so now they start domesticating the cattle. In 1847, with the Mahele, Parker is the first time he's allowed to buy land. He buys two acres here in Waimea. The original homestead that Parker builds um, is still here today. It's called Manahale. It's amazing to think that Manahale uh, was the humble beginning, two acres of what today is thousands and thousands of acres. What does it take to run a place like this today? Well, um, you know, it did start with two acres. A few years after he bought his land, his wife inherited a section because she was a royal princess, 640 acres. As the ranch prospered, um, the Parkers bought more and more land. At the height, they owned about half the Big Island. You know, when the ranch was put into trust in 1992, the Parkers owned about 200,000 acres. The ranch presently is at 150,000 acres, and it's likely to stay that way. 150,000 acres, we have uh, 30,000 head of cattle, we have about 250 horses, we have uh, 12 full-time Paniolo cowboys, we have eight part-time, so you're like, wow, 30,000 cattle, 12 cowboys, how does that work? It seems to work very well at the Parker Ranch. One of the most famous Paniolos from Waimea was Ikua Purdy, great-grandson of John Palmer Parker, who, as they say, roped his way into history at the 1908 Frontier Days in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Every year since 1943, on the 4th of July, the cowboy tradition is celebrated with a rodeo at Parker Ranch. If you're in Waimea on the 4th, chances are that's where everyone will be.
this house behind us. Tell us a little bit about this house. This house is called Pu'ul Pelu. It was the home of the Parkers from 1879 till 1992. Four generations lived here. They ran the ranch from this house. It's the heart and soul of Parker Ranch. The house is about 8,000 square feet. Mr. Smart filled it with Asian and uh, European art, beautiful art collection. It's on 300 acres of horse paddock. It's still a working part of Parker Ranch. It's a, it's a very uh, strong touchstone to the ranch, and it's a place where all of us that work on a ranch love Pu'ul Pelu. Tell us a little bit about Richard Smart. Richard Smart was the sixth generation Parker. His mother was Thelma Kahilu Parker. She married a man named Henry Smart. That's where we get the name changed from fifth to sixth generation. Um, Richard was tragically orphaned. His mother and father died. Um, his mother of tuberculosis, his father of meningitis, when he was two and a half years old. He's raised by his grandmother, Elizabeth Jane Dowsett, who lost her husband at 19. So. Here's Elizabeth Jane Dowsett, a Victorian debutante who raises Thelma, now raises Richard. Um, with all the tragedy in Richard's youth, the rest of his life is pretty magical. Yeah. His mother does it, his grandmother does a great job raising him. He's taught by A.W. Carter to run a ranch. And then, you know, in his uh, adulthood, he becomes a performer as well, becomes our singing and dancing cattle baron. And after his Broadway career, after his singing career, he successfully runs the ranch for 30 years. A very colorful life. I mean, we end our story with the singing and dancing cattle baron, Richard Smart, and mm -hmm. it's so special with all the tragedy in his life. And then, you know, to come up and become such a, you know, bring joy to the world through his performances. It's, it's a miraculous thing. What a colorful family and what a wonderful, wonderful story. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Anthony. It's my pleasure. Mahalo, mahalo. Mahalo. See you on Parker Ranch. <laughs>